Well, everybody, welcome on back to Cusa Grande, the bad video game tournament. You know, huge thank you to all of the people who help out. The mods in chat have kept things extremely civil. Uh, the GMs put in a lot of work, and Cadis, our official referee, is absolutely destroying it this year, making sure that the games are being tracked. And as I always say, Cadis, feel free to make other people do more work because you do a lot that we just can't really, well, we, that we, you do a lot, you do a lot. Well, everybody, let's welcome um, in our GM for the second game. Say hello to your nightmares, Jeff. Jeff XVX is giving out the game. Hello there, Jeff. Hi. Oh my gosh, people are so excited to see you, except for Nightbot. Nightbot is a little bit terrified. Nightbot, I'll go easy on you. Oh, yeah, don't make Nightbot play a game, okay? That would be fun. Um, yeah. I I made I made Nightbot play a hundred hours of Kuso, and this is uh, and then and then write a script, and this is what it came up with. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, wait, this game is what it came up with? I'm I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is it. Uh what game do we have today? It's called Cuke Land. Uh, as in cucumber. Yeah, yum yum, everybody. Cuke Land at <clears throat> Cuke Land Adventure. Cuke Land Adventure? This is for DOS, yes. right? I believe it's for DOS. It is for DOS, yes. Uh, one of our players' stream names has changed. I have to use that then. <laughs> Some people forget to tell me. That's okay. Well, Q Clan, here's the deal. Is this related to Pickle Wars at all? No. I mean, this might be where the wars happened. Nope. No. Nope. There's no Pickle Wars, nor Pickles, nor Wars. There are just cucumbers in a land. I want a war! I want a cucumber war! <laughs> well, you know, start one. But you need to go to Cuke Land. Everybody, come and join my pickle war! The problem, well, the problem that with sounds having, like it's not allowed on Twitch. The problem with having a war over there is uh, it could quickly escalate, escalate to becoming cuclear. My gosh. And we'd be in quite a pickle. No, you're not allowed to do pickle puns. That's too, bad. too easy. It's too bad. It's too bad. I no. already did, Jeff. You're. <laughs> that's that's playing on easy mode. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, you want me to play on hard, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, you better you better start doing uh, doing your pun so I can go ahead and sandwich right in there. And because cause cucumber sandwiches were a thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're a thing in England, right? But I don't know if they're a thing anywhere else. I've eaten cucumber sandwich. Have you Where? not? I don't recall. Yeah, I prefer so it not been to England. say. Could have been. <laughs> um, I, I haven't, but I did have cucumber sushi last night, which was quite tasty. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very easy to easy to get into sushi for people who haven't had much sushi before like you won't uh immediately want to vomit because of it uh and that's always nice i don't i don't like the flavor quite as much but it's okay vegan so you know it's that and avocado rolls mostly ooh i like hmm i would take the cucumber i like cucumber more than avocado in sushi uh, I actually, like, it, it just doesn't have as much flavor as some of the other rolls do. Although I imagine you could get some cucumber rolls that do pack more of a punch. Uh, it's just the very basic California rolls, very boring, comparatively. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, do they have different types of uh, cucumber rolls there, where you are? They have ones with like this kind of plum sauce on them. Oh, but... I love plum. Yeah. Oh, Jeff. 
You're yeah, speaking that's my good. language now. That's what I had. It was good. Okay, never mind. Throw the tune out, everybody. We're gonna go get some plum sauce. Nice. I, I, I would definitely try that, Jeff. Um, alright, well, next time I see you, I'll, uh, I'll bring some with me. That would be great! I would love that. Well, you don't have to bring sushi. You could bring the sauce. Well, the sauce, <laughs> is, the sauce comes already on the sushi. Well, everybody, we are getting ready for Cukeland, and just so you know, this is not going to have any game audio at all. There are no sound effects, there is no music, so we're just going to go ahead and keep listening to the music that we have on the playlist right now. Uh, yeah, who would have guessed that Jeff's given out a game that has literally no audio? Not me! I'm generally pretty, uh, pretty good about picking things that have something that could be described as audio. Um, this one, though, and, you know, it's not pleasant, but this time I think there, it, it's actually a benefit to the players uh, to not have audio on the game. You think so? I, yeah, I mean... Oh. Given how, uh, how the rest of the game is put together, <laughs> I think they're better off without music. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, luckily the cucumber walk cycle is pretty good, and that's a sentence I never want to say again. I mean, if it did have a lot of music, would that make it a, um, juke land adventure? It might. It might. It might. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Have you ever grown cucumbers, Jeff? I have. They grow out of control. Yes. Yeah, the problem is I ended up with too many cucumbers too fast. The same. Couldn't eat them all. Same. Yeah. Everybody, I need you to get ready to spam all of your greenest emotes. If you have any cucumbers for some reason, spam those. Uh, anything else the chat should spam? Uh... Yeah, if you got cucumbers, that's good. Fuzzy pickles, if you have those. Fuzzy pickles, anything green. Okay. And as soon as I see movement, I will start our timer. There we go. Bring in the green. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is. Uh, yeah, bring in all your green. Um, you can also bring in cuke umber if you have that. I don't. No, you don't have anything oh, that yeah. color. I've got an. I've got an emo for this. Bam. There you go. Yeah, my face is not green, that one guy. I can't believe you would try to use that. <laughs> and Shovel Knight has changed, but here we go. Uh, we're on to Cuke Land for DOS. And this looks like it's... <sighs> vaguely Commander Keen. Definitely has the aesthetic of um, Apogee games. Yeah, um, I, I would agree with that. It looks like the final Sentinel having issues with controls. Well, guess what? Yeah, I'm not were pausing. All... Yeah, yeah. Um, they were all given uh, time to test the controls and confirm that it all worked. So, Yeah, considering um, that this is round four now, no sympathy. Yes. So um, here's what's going on. Uh, you gotta collect these um, these candies. That's the like the red donuts, mm -hmm. and then get to the exit to clear the level. And there's six levels. Pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. But this isn't just a collectathon. It's really more of a puzzle game. And there are two aspects to the puzzle. One is, you know, actually getting to the candies, and the other is <clears throat> you have. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. A limited amount of health and there aren't a lot of ways to kill enemies but there okay. are some places where there's unavoidable damage that you will take if you don't kill the enemy gotcha. and so if you have too many of those situations you can't clear the level um, this game has some really interesting mechanics um, and I didn't tell the players 
anything about them. So. Oh, okay. Um, cool. So this is gonna be fun watching. Um, but first of all, um, you can carry multiple items, but it affects how high you can jump the number of items you have. So you might not be able to get um, above some of these green pillars if you have too many items, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Second thing is you attack by throwing these... They look kind of like gumballs or something. Okay. Um, and you just, they, they get thrown in an arc and then they bounce around. They're not one weapon. They are whatever it is that you just throw. So if your inventory has a key, then you just threw a key. It doesn't look like a key until it lands, until it finishes moving. Okay. Um, so the two different kinds of enemies, the cucumbers and red, um, yeah. you, you have different kinds of uh, weapons that need to kill each of those. The cucumbers need um, salad dressing. Okay. And then they turn into a salad. Aww. It's cool. Do you eat them? Yes. Yes, you can. Does that restore health? I actually didn't notice. Since the health bar isn't on the screen, um, you need to hit space to check your health. Okay. Um, so there might be some things that give you health, but um, I wasn't paying too much attention to them. Gotcha. To kill the red things, you need a um, Audrey 2 to set a trap for them. And so you get your your, your Venus fly trap, and it just lands wherever it ends up landing. I like that he just yells out yes when he gets a salad. He's like, yes! The best He's very excited about salad. salad ever. Yeah. And you get a yum when you get candy, so that's great. Yeah, which is better, though, salad or candy? I mean, one's better for the taste buds, and one is better for the health depends on the candy. I don't know. There's a lot that... I'm, I'm not as much of a sugar fiend as I was when I was younger. It's just... I don't know. I don't really need it that much. No? Okay, final yeah. sentinel trying to figure out... Can you get back through the sparkle thing? I don't know. So here's something that's really... I thought is kind of clever, but also rude about the game is that in, in video games, normally a key is to open something, right? Yeah. Here, the keys also close things. Okay. So you, can, so you can take one of these things that is where a door should be, and yeah. use a key on it, and it will the door will appear there, and then you can jump on it. But I don't think anybody's figured that out yet. I think Final Sentinel just hit a kill button. I presume there is yes. a kill button. There is a kill button because everybody probably thinks they've soft locked. And this took me a while too. I kept playing this and I'm like, there's gotta be a way to get back up after you, you fall down there. If there's not, then I'm probably doing something wrong by falling all the way down there, right? Maybe I've soft locked. So they all think they've soft locked. Now, they, they may be, if you get down there without a key, you have, in fact, soft locked. Well, there but, are two keys down there. Are there are two keys, right. There are two keys right down there. So, shouldn't be a problem um, unless you waste them, right? Like, you can just throw the keys at things and then you don't have them anymore. How do you jump high? By dropping items. Oh, so, if you're holding too much stuff, you can't jump out of there? Exactly. Uh, you didn't tell them that, did you? No, of course not. Oh, I like that. Um, this game is actually relatively short. It's only six levels, so I thought it would be more fun to just let them figure stuff out. It would slow down their progress as well. Yeah. Plus, it makes this a lot more fun to watch. <laughs> um, getting I'm, to see. I'm a fan of like controls varying based off of like what you've collected so far. That that's such a fun mechanic that more games should like try to implement maybe it's not the best mechanic for most people out there but it is for me i mean it works sometimes and other times it doesn't i think it's totally valid for a puzzle type game oh yeah same when oh uh final sentinel 
almost figured it out. I figured out the part about the door, but didn't figure out the part about needing to drop some items. Um, but has now used a couple of items. So... Okay. Maybe, but then picked them back up. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if everybody's uh, gotten the idea. Yeah, okay. Grumpmeister may have gotten it. I was looking away for a bit, but I see them back up Wait, on top. Wait, did the plant just eat his key? Or do some of the enemies eat your keys? Like, the, the keys... Like, the items just sort of disappear, and... I can't tell sometimes whether it's the monster eating it or they just disappear after a certain period of time. Okay. But I I pretty quickly lost uh, a lot of my items. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I, w I was asking that because Final Sentinel, like, it looked like the red enemy just walked onto the Final Sentinel's key and then it said, you are dead. But I presume that Final Sentinel might have just hit the kill button at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So you can also see, um, I guess people aren't really showing much uh, the the screen that shows their health, but you only have like, I don't know, like five or six bars of health. Okay. Uh, and so um, if you don't kill this cucumber down here, um, there's a good chance you're going to take some damage. And then there's the one uh, red monster on the bottom left that will definitely uh, cause damage if you don't use the piranha plant on them. Oh yeah. Uh, but I think that they'll be able to make progress a lot more quickly once they figure out the mechanics. This is one of the games where you are, I think, way better off focusing on figuring out the mechanics earlier on rather than figuring out how to make progress. Are if you just sort of one-time use? Yes. Okay. So, so that's why you can get like two of them. Right. So essentially you get two of them. And if you don't use them in the right place or if, you know, you, you waste them, then you're essentially soft locked. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell when you're soft locked because it's not like in some games where you, you just can't get out of an area. I mean, that, that can happen here. But a lot of times you won't know until it's like, oh, yeah, it looks like now there's one candy I won't be able to get to. You need all the candies to clear the level. So this is going this is going well because um, there's six levels. I was worried okay. that they might finish the whole game within the time allotted, but if they're still all on level one and ten minutes has passed. I I think this is uh, pretty good. Um, pretty good pace for them. The way we're measuring progress is uh, obviously if somebody wins the game and if not then whoever gets to the furthest level within levels though it's measured by the number of candies they've picked up okay so that um that's what you have to do to get to the end of the level so pretty straightforward um it's a it's a pretty rough proxy for how far you've gotten into the level because for example you know you you could make a lot of progress on the level and just sort of skip over some of the obvious candies. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they, they need to keep that in mind to be strategic about what they do. Um, but yeah, as long as they, uh, they all work on figuring out these mechanics in the first, I don't know, 20 minutes or so of the match, I think they'll find the rest of it to be uh, a lot easier. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh this is kind of a fascinating game, though, made by Hugo, Hugo Windish, from what I can see. I don't know if he worked on anything other than this game, though, which honestly isn't explain. too big of a surprise. Yeah. Oh, and in case you all were wondering, this is not an American game. That was kind of like a one-time thing I did last week, giving out an American game. Uh, we're back to this is Canadian. Ah! So... Yeah, and you know, it, it is surprisingly rude for a Canadian game. It's a little rude. I, I'd say, yeah. Okay. Here's the thing that's interesting. A lot of the times that we have games in, in Guso Grande, the controls are terrible, right? Like, that's that's one of the, the 
selling points or whatever for a lot of these games. This controls really well. Um, I mean, it's a little awkward that the uh, the shot goes in an arc, yeah. but you can. But it's predictable, right? I mean, you just need to line yourself up and do it. Um, the platforming aspect of this really isn't bad. It's um, what's what's bad about this is that the mechanics are so opaque, mm -hmm. and um, there's no. I mean, I, I guess if you read the instructions, you get a little bit better idea of it. But like, they don't. The instructions don't tell you like, oh, you can close a door. They're like, use a key to open a door. It's like we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm, I'm really a fan of this game so far. Like, here's the deal. I haven't seen any lag. Uh, the platforming seems okay. The the biggest complaint that I probably would have is that the jumping is a little bit delayed at times. Uh, and the, other than that, uh, for gameplay design, all of the soft locks are a huge pain, but outside of those issues, the, the slightly delayed jumping as well as the soft locks, I feel like this is pretty high quality. Like for a single person making a game back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know when this came out, but this is from 94 from 94. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is great. I think so. And, uh, you know, the it looks like a lot more of the effort, uh, a lot of the effort that would have gone into doing things like music went into, like, level design and creative mechanics. So, like, I, I actually had fun playing this, and I like the game. But it's not a good game. <laughs> hey, Grummeister appears to be on the second level. Okay, so why isn't it a good game? Explain. I mean, I'd give it a pass maybe at the time, but uh, the the graphics are not not so hot. There's no music. Um, the game is just so opaque. The the level design is is good in certain ways but you'd expect for like a puzzle game for it to like teach you the mechanics as you go along and not just throw you in at the beginning with these puzzles that are like the only way you're going to figure this out is try everything yeah that's true um you know i'm also not a huge fan of unavoidable damage it has a like feature i mean it has some utility here as being sort of part of the puzzle but there are a lot there are a lot better ways to uh to do the puzzles than unavoidable damage i think yeah there there are some better ways to do that i, I would agree there's also there's like no lore for this which really disappointed me because you wrote lore though yeah but that's just fanfic uh as far as i'm concerned it's official now uh, okay. So here's the lore. For some reason, there's sentient cucumbers, and they built a society in Cucland where they kill any humans who come there as revenge for all the cucumbers eaten by humans. But they're only cucumbers, so they got some monsters to help them, and for some reason, they put candy around Cucland. And you show up to eat the candy, but they don't want you to eat the candy because they need it there for some reason. So the cucumbers and monsters walk around hoping you'll touch them so you can die. They also left items around that help you kill cucumbers and monsters for some reason. You could probably just leave so you don't risk dying, but then you wouldn't get to eat any candy. That's the lore now. Do you like my fanfic? Yeah. Yeah. See, I should, uh... I should, uh, I should design video games. That's what I should do. Yeah! Yeah, you should. Uh... You yeah, can do the I... voice acting. Oh, I could do voice acting for you. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, I... What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Yeah, I've been working on designing a game a little bit as well, and, uh, it is surprisingly difficult. But also, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I found it to be the same thing. Things that you 
don't think should be particularly hard end up being really hard. Mm hmm It's like, oh, well, the way that I made that makes it so that the character, like, if you hit just pixel perfect on the corner of a block when you're trying to do any platforming, just weird stuff happens. So thank yep. you. Yep. And so you got to figure out a way to deal with the, the very basics of platforming. I, I think that, you know, dealing with stuff that has already been solved yeah. is actually very beneficial so that you can learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I love it. It's fun. Um, so Grimmeister's making some progress. Seems to have gotten the uh, idea about uh, needing to drop items when uh, you have uh, you can't jump high enough but um, ultimately look like uh, he's soft locked in an area and restarted so there's just there's a lot in these I mean they're, they're levels aren't that big spatially but there's a lot going on in them um, to figure out empty I thank you for that raid by the way it's good to have you here Ooh, now La Milana music. I'm always okay with that. So Jean Genie just made it to the exit and made it to level two. Where we have red. Maybe those are pickles. I don't know. Red uh, cucumbers or pickles. I think they're they, kidney beans. Oh, they're kidney beans? Okay, we got red kidney beans, green cucumbers. I'm, I am actually kind of concerned about what the world would be like if cucumbers were sentient. I don't want to know. I don't care. I don't... They're not going to grow brains. And honestly, if they did, I would probably still eat them. <laughs> you would eat cucumber brain? Yeah. Probably, probably tastes pretty good. Make sure you eat it all up and don't leave any cute crumbers. Oh my gosh. Okay, Jeff, okay. See, so, you know, like, the players suffer playing this game, but the audience suffers from my puns, and I'm never really sure who has who has it worse off. Well, I mean, you probably do, bro, Sancho, but... <laughs> <laughs> we just end up cute dumber. Dumb, yeah. Dumber. We try on that one. It wasn't even a try. <laughs> I threw that out because I knew that it was not going to work. See? Oh my gosh. Question, is a cucumber technically a gourd? I know that technically it's a fruit. I don't know. Maybe we have some botanists here to enlighten us. Okay, it's a people. Nasa people. People. Generally, generally, the answer to a question like, is it a fruit or is it a tuber or vegetable, depends on whether you're talking about in a culinary sense or a strictly botanical sense. Yeah. Well, I, I know that gourds are berries and a cucumber is a berry. I just don't know if the cucumber is a gourd. Uh, is cucumber gourd... I'm Google is cucumber gourd. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is. They're a member of the gourd or uh, cucubitakea or sea family of plants. So, guess what? The gourd. You're right. Yeah. And they're gorgeous. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I really like the way the cucumbers look. They're cute. They're cute cumbers. Ah. <laughs> One Zast went out on a date and it said nothing because it's a freaking cucumber, you know. Then I ate it. <laughs> you ate your date? <laughs> well, no, it wasn't my date because it didn't it didn't agree to a date, so I just ate it. Um, it didn't agree to a date. Would it have agreed to a fig? Wow. <laughs> Actually, I'm just trying to think. The flavor combination of 
a fig and a cucumber just sounds not great. Ugh. People put, like, uh, fig balsamic dressing on their salads with cucumbers in them. So, well, like, yeah, but that's right. balsamic. Balsamic yeah, that's true. dressing is... Or, uh, balsamic reduction is, like, the best thing that exists in the, yes. all time. Yes. So good. I'm a big fan. You're a big fan. Just spinning around all the time, Jeff. That's what he does. You know what? I'm a bad influence on you. <laughs> so we have still two players stuck on the first level, um, which hmm. I haven't been able to figure out yet which mechanics they know or don't know yet, um, and whether it's at this point just executing it or still trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Um, yeah, but... it's it's rough. Rough it's... to live in, in a land with walking cucumbers, you know? It's a surprisingly hard game, and it, it's just, it doesn't... You look at it at first and you're like, all right, if this was a platformer, this would be pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. Just sort of jump around and the weapon's a little funky, but sure, that works. But um, it's uh, it's it's pretty tough. Um, By the way, those who are watching, this match is super important. Only one of these players will have a chance to make it into the bracket. Some of them are at 20 points, and because of that, they will... Uh, if they take first, they will move into the bracket. Others are at 19, which means that they would enter the tiebreaker if we have a tiebreaker, if the bracket's not already full. Uh, so, yeah, honestly, there's a lot at stake with this cucumber game. That's unfortunate. <laughs> um, or is you know, it? Yeah. Oh. Um no, it's unfortunate for the players. I, I think this has got to be really frustrating uh, game to feel like you're stuck, and yet this is the match that's going to determine whether you can move on or not. Because um, it's not just like, okay, I need to do better with my platforming. You just, you can just get so frustrated with this game, uh, even when nothing's at stake. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I think it might be a little bit hard to tell between Jean Gene Genie and Grumpmeister who has made more progress in this stage uh, after a little while. Like, Grumpmeister has been here the longest, but I don't it completely is know what's going what's gonna to be required. It is a little hard to tell because I haven't been paying real close attention to how many candies they've gotten, but fortunately it is objectively measurable. Um, Okay. For, for a referee to figure out how many candies there were on their best run. Ah. But um, we now have finally everybody clearing the first level. So. Very um, nice. Yeah. So this is this is all going according to plan. <laughs> I would have felt. I always kind of feel bad if people don't make it out of level one in a game I give out. I, well, I don't feel bad. But yeah. I feel like I could have I could have given a better pick. Um, I like to see a bit of a spread, um, rather than everybody getting sort of walled on the same place. Mm -hmm. It's also got to be a really frustrating experience for the player if you can't get out of level one in a match. So they've all done it. They've all made some progress. I mean, it wouldn't have been the first time that nobody got past level one, but yeah, it's uh, it's always good to not get stuck. No. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, uh, it seems like there are enough of the projectiles that you can use in order to eat salads that if they do restore your health, that could be a, a, a significantly helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, it was, uh, I think it was a good call to not give them the instructions because that it has made this match, um, be much more about the skill of 
sort of figuring out the puzzles. And uh, that's something that, since we get so many platformers on Cuso Grande, I like to sometimes give slightly different types of skills that people need uh, to win the game. So we can, we can mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh... This is still better than the anti, uh, anti drinking game that you gave me back when you were my GM. That was an experience, Chef. Okay. You know, it looked nicer, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was real, real kuso. I think you might actually dislike some of the games I give out a lot more if you actually played them. But at any rate, we got Grimpmeister <laughs> on to level three. Yay, level three, it's so green. Oh we my have a gosh. clear winner now. Well, I mean, clear lead at the very least. I mean, a clear, clear lead, sorry. Like, that's it. We're done with this cucumber game. Anymore. Jeff said so. We're just going to scrap it. Um. Yeah, there's six levels, so, you know, it is not inconceivable that somebody will finish it. Um, if Grumpmeister has really figured out all of the uh, mechanics well, um, then it's just sort of how quickly can you figure out this specific uh, puzzles on a level. Um, but I do like that the levels are unique. Um, they have a different feel to them. They have different enemies. They have different mm -hmm. graphics. Um, yeah, I like it. I'm not sure why they're like Japanese symbols in the background. That looks like I don't I I don't know enough about kanji or hiragana or katakana to know if it is anything. Can anybody uh, like say what that symbol means? Because that might help us figure out the, the trick to beating this level. I... I don't like these, like, potato flies, okay? Not a fan. Yeah, they... I don't know what exactly they're supposed to be, other than they're just... Like, they're just flying potatoes? Like, that... I don't know. Interesting idea. Flying potatoes, like, potato bees or something? They feel like they should be in weird dreams. It seems like the kind of thing that would go there. Yeah, or or binding of Isaac, one of those two. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's also kind of an interesting concept to have uh, the enemies just be vegetables. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned about this kid because. It's very clear that he eats the candy, but when he collects the salad, he doesn't say yum. He says yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a an affirmation of uh, killing of his kill. He's excited about an affirmation of the kill. <laughs> affirmation of the kill. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's like it's like if you're fishing, you catch a fish. And it dies, but you throw it back anyway. It's... I don't know. I I think it's I think it's a dumb idea. Stupid so... child with his stupid nose. What even is his name, huh? Probably like like. I mean, I haven't named Kelly. him, and <laughs> probably Ellie. Sure. Or I said okay. Kelly. Ellie. Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Kelly. Kelly. Either one is fine. The nose is kind of weird. I, I have no idea why that was done other than to make it kind of funny and notable. Um, it looks like... Certainly... What's his name was here? Kilroy. Maybe he's Kilroy. I don't, who's Kilroy? Kilroy was here. You know, the, the old World War II meme. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and, he, like, if he were bald, he would absolutely be Kilroy. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. 
Now, it's Chikabo. You say it's one of the first memes. Uh, no. No. Memes have existed for, like, ever since, a, like, probably before written history, I would guess. Cave art. I, I would say the cave art is mimetic. Yeah. I mean, anything that's, uh, like, unit of of culture that gets passed around that gets passed around and changes based off of people's perception of that unit of culture is considered a meme uh the scary thing is that people who are really into memetics may say hey literally everything is a meme as soon as you think about it it becomes a meme because the way that you perceive it is different from any other way it's perceived uh so with that said, I'm not sure I completely buy that or buy it, it's, how important that is. It's not a meme until somebody looks at it? Is that until it's observed? Is that like... It's not a meme until it's observed, exactly. So that it, it, Does that make it like a Schrodinger cat meme? <sighs> a little bit, yeah. Uh, actually, I'd say observed or imagined. You know, if, if, or imagined. Yes, okay. as soon as something is imagined, then it has become a meme. Wow. Yeah, so it's even more powerful than Schrodinger, because you can imagine what the cat's gonna be, but you don't, you don't know. That's true. Yeah. You don't know. Um, cats. Um. Cats can do some un unexpected things. I wait, Gene uh, Genie on to level three as well. Uh, yeah, Gene Genie has made it into brackets before. Uh, they are making a really good push at this point. But again, only one person from this group is going to make it into brackets. Grumpmeister has the advantage, having been on level three for the longest time at this point. I found a YouTube video called Cucumbers Scaring Cats. Have you seen this? It had like oh, 4 I million love it. views yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. those stupid cats. They think the cucumber's a snake. See, it's a meme. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good times. It's very wholesome fun. Not it's for got the cats. cats, though. Well, maybe not for the cats, but for us, um, it's, got, it's got veggies that are good for you, and it's got cats. Um, Wait, it's it, it's wholesome because it's got a vegetable in it? Yes, that's how I it works. I can tell you a few YouTube videos where you probably wouldn't say the same thing, but can't tell you what they are on this stream. Okay, you didn't need to take it that direction. <laughs> I'm just saying, not everything that has a vegetable is wholesome. Okay, that's that's that is that is true. Uh, I was just saying it was a contributing factor. You know, videos of cats and with cucumbers just sitting there not, not doing anything crazy. True. Not trying to kill anybody. In front you know. of your salad? Exactly. And I know what y'all doing with the pumpkins, okay? I know it's October. Just, just cut it out. Cut it out, cut. everybody. We need wholesome pumpkin videos. Not what you're making. So we have, um, uh, I, I, I sent you a link to a cucumber song. I don't know if you, if you saw that, but. I did. I'm worried that it's copyright. You probably shouldn't show it on stream, but it's a guy doing some kind of like reggae thing about all the vitamins and minerals and cucumbers. You could share it in uh, Twitch chat if you would like to share a cucumber song with them. Yeah, that's true. I can I can do that. Yeah. Uh, let me pull that up. It's, uh... By the way, Gene Genie is making a lot of progress in this area pretty quickly. Uh, they yeah. are right near where Grumpmeister is. Yeah. It is actually a pretty close race. I thought, you know, at first... Um, Grumpmeister was going to pull pretty far ahead, having, while well, everybody was still stuck on level one, but 
Um, the progress has been so uneven that people who are um, having trouble earlier on are doing better now. I do have to ask about the save and load mechanic. Uh, when you save, does it save your progress on a level or ju does it just save what level you're on? Just what level you're on. Okay. So, yeah, I was wondering if some players might try to save scum, and that's like a completely valid choice. I would have tried that just to see if it worked. I told them uh, how that mechanic worked because somebody specifically asked. And I didn't think that it would be, um, it would make it any more fun to withhold that information from them. Yeah, I, I think I would agree because um, it's generally good information to have. Oh my gosh, Gene Genie just ate the potato fly. Um, they good? are, they're edible. Yes. Yes. I mean, I don't know why you'd put a potato fly into your salad, but I mean, I guess it's good. You know what? The, the potato flies also kind of remind me of the game Out to Lunch. Uh, where yeah, if you, you can don't... stop talking now. I hate that game so much. <laughs> it's okay. good. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead and tell the viewers what you were saying about Out to Lunch. I was joking. You can go ahead and talk about it. It's fine. You're a chef, and all your vegetables have escaped, and you go around and, and collect them and put them back in a cage, but they get angry, and when they get angry, like, the potatoes and things will start to fly around. They must have gotten it from this game. Oh my... Oh, they get angry because they get corrupted. And they get corrupted, that's I, right, I by back... Yeah, they go bad. Bacteria. Yeah, the bacteria corrupt them. Um, or, uh, I think that the, the evil chef can corrupt them as well. I don't remember, but the evil chef sometimes appears and releases all can. of the vegetables. Yeah. Releases all of the vegetables you captured. It feels a little weird going around and, like, capturing sentient vegetables so that you can, like, dice them up into tiny pieces and eat them. Like, I mean, uh, look... Burger time, I was going to say booger time. Uh, burger time has ex existed for quite a while, and there are sentient vegetables trying to murder you, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's a tale as old as time, you know? Sure. Yeah. The murdering vegetables. Um, age old, age old tale. Yeah, there, there's a song that I'm thinking of that, that has the chorus... Uh, I hear the screams of the vegetables watching their skins being peeled. Uh, I don't remember the next couple lines, but carrot juice constitutes murder, Jeff. No, it doesn't. Greenhouses are prisons. Yeah, uh, for... Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that what they teach you in Utah? That's what I learned in Utah. Not sure it was in school, but it was somewhere. <laughs> I think it was from my uncle. He was a huge Dr. Demento fan and would put together collections of CDs with some really weird music. And uh, uh, yeah, that so that was one of the songs that he shared with me. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. All right, so we've gotten everybody back on the same on the same page here i don't actually know who's winning at this point but uh looks like a really close match honestly uh, yeah final sentinel and uh zed hawthorne are both making some progress here still behind grumpmeister and gene genie who are essentially at the same place although holy cow th this is a bit annoying because they're probably going to have to deposit some of the island or the items. Yeah. Yep, Grumpmeister doing that right now so that he can collect them after yeah, getting out exactly. of that pit. I, I like it. That was the play. You needed it's to drop it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting the way that uh, the way that it rolls in this game. Don't shoot more than one key though, Grumpmeister. And they really had some... Hey, I mean, this was one person. He really had some good ideas for a game. Um, I love it. They're, it. It's 
weird uh, sort of inventory management puzzling that you have to do in this game. There we go. Yeah. Grumpmeister killing that cucumber there. This game was distributed as shareware, but there wasn't a registered version. This is just this is just it. Yeah. I think I think I, that's it, so cool. It was basic <clears throat> it's basically, I guess what we'd call freeware now. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, a lot of shareware like a lot of games that were distributed were complete games anyway, and they just had like a password they had to enter in after a while in order to continue playing the game. Uh, where in the USA is Carmen San Diego, for example, was one of those. Shareware was exactly the same as the full game. Just had to have the password. Yep. Yep. And guess what? We didn't have the password. Although I wouldn't have been too surprised if they were all available online. And if so, that's, I, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's just a written piece of information. Have you ever played Where in North Dakota is Carmen San Diego? I think you showed that to me and it was, I haven't played it, no. Okay. It's pretty much what it sounds like. It's not like a fan game or anything. It was made to teach, um, it was made to teach kids in North Dakota about the history and geography of their state. Um, didn't didn't really catch on, though. You don't say. Um, Grubmeister, by the way, is on to level four, and we and Gene Genie right behind him. Holy cow, this is an extremely close match between those two. Uh, yeah. People are saying that they're worried that Grubmeister didn't save, but I'm not sure if that's a big deal. It seems more useful, but like if for some reason you need to close your game and go back uh go back to it at a different time um, as far as i'm aware you can continue on the same level right uh if you die yeah 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 um but Cadis is but... correct games have crashed on Cusa grande this game looks relatively stable, but you never really know. And, you know, being careful is definitely more important than uh, being reckless. Yeah. And honestly, it's so fast to save in this game. You might as well. Any game that, like, has a loading screen just to get to the save menu, you might question whether or not you should save, but not with this. I feel like the save thing was kind of an afterthought because when you try and use the save menu, like you hit S to save, but then it gives you a confirmation screen. Like, are you sure you want to? Yes, no. But it like, if, if you, uh, when you hit the S, it continues to register that input on okay. the confirmation screen. Oh so yeah, I saw that. that. So like, it's like its own little mini game saving. You have to like hit the button real quick. Yeah, if you don't, it'll save multiple times. No, what will happen is when you say yes, no, or when, when it asks you yes, no, if you hit S, it's oh. like, well, S is neither Y nor N. Oh, so, so it's like too bad. So clearly you didn't mean to save your game. So we're just going to cancel it. Okay. <laughs> an interesting choice but um sure <laughs> i love it okay grumpmeister i think has collected a little bit more candy than gene genie gene genie uh, uh getting to the door that grumpmeister just made it through unfortunately you have to go through the carrot gauntlet to get there although gene carrot genie has gauntlet. opted to go left and collect candy i feel like grumpmeister has already been here though yeah. I love the deadly turnips. Like, they're kind of the cutest enemy I've seen so far in this game. Like, the, the potato flies are okay, but the cucumbers, holy, or not not the cucumbers, the, the turnips, they're beautiful. Yeah, the, the potato 
the potato flies, they're, they're really cute. They're spuds. Yeah, they, that is technically correct. They are spuds. I wonder if there's some, if there's some pun that I'm missing. The, with the flying potatoes. Or if it's just, uh. He's you gotta like, have an eye for detail, you know, in order to catch him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, potato potato puns are a little easier than the cucumber ones, but um, I guess the cucumber ones are just like the mascot of it. They're the they're the main ones. They're the ones that built this this land, <sighs> according to my lore. Yeah, or at least the buildings in the land. I don't know, I think the land built them. Cucumber land built the cucumbers? Well, I mean, yeah, how else are you gonna have cucumbers multiply? You don't just have them do, you know, doing things like mammals. No, they they grow out of the ground, right? Pretty sure they grow out of the ground. They can. You can also grow them hydroponically. Okay, but... Yeah, because of that, they, they generally come out of at least some sort of dirt, is what I'm saying, or nutrient-based liquid. That's that's the typical process, yes. Yeah, and I don't want to think of the alternatives, okay? I'm going to believe that they follow the typical process, and I'm not believing anything else. We have... 11 minutes left, and I'm not sure that we're going to see any completions at this point, but we will have seen um, pretty close to the whole game, and I'm oh. really excited about that because this is, uh, even for the games that I give out, pretty, pretty obscure. Um, yeah, there's, like, I've seen one or two sites that have this game. It's not very well known. And, uh, you know, there's, I, I couldn't even find, like, anything on YouTube, uh, beyond something acknowledging that it existed, but no playthroughs or anything like that. Oh, watch out, Grubmeister! Oh, luckily you, like, right when you took damage, you also ate the potato, so the good a dog eat dog or eat dog eat I'm I don't know I don't know eat dog eat since you both ate each other at the same time eat dog eat yeah yes that's um that's what my grandma used to tell me okay your grandma's cool yeah yeah, yeah. she was yeah I like her a hey, gruntmeister descending I'm not sure where Grumpmeister needs to go, but he has collected uh, some of the candies that I believe Jean Genie got just right there. Jean Genie, though, still lacking a few of these uh, candies, like in this area specifically. They collect them. Uh, I don't know. I feel like one of them is going to beat the stage fairly soon, though. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, there are a lot of candies on this level, but um, I think they've gotten they've gotten the puzzles figured out pretty well. Oh yeah, I think Grumpmeister was just trying to figure out where to go, and unfortunately, that might be a loss for Grumpmeister uh, because guess what? You can collect a key up above where Grumpmeister, like up at the top left. Uh, Grumpmeister used it immediately to go through another door, but I feel like that was just a red herring and made it so that Grumpmeister had to start the level over again. Yeah, the soft locks are, are pretty costly in a race setting. But with that said, it was still a really good push, and considering that this game is kind of a puzzle platformer, soft locks are expected in this game. Yes. Uh, that was still... I don't, does the level immediately end when you collect all the candies? No, you have to find the exit. Okay, Grumpmeister may have had all the candies, or at least had close to all of them. Yeah. 
get. And because of that, he may be able to get through most of this quickly. Final Sentinel is starting to catch up, though. Final Sentinel on the same level as Grumpmeister and Jean Genie. Uh, so this, this is coming down to, to being really close. So one person goes on and there's a tiebreaker for the potentially for the second. No, the first person will either move on or go to the tiebreaker, depending on oh. who comes in first. Second, Everybody third, and else fourth, gone. they're out. Yeah. Thank you, by the they're way, out. Toad, for that host here. I hope that y'all like cucumbers. So and there... That's the, the thing. All right. So... It doesn't, on some level, really matter who's second, third, and fourth, right? Because they're all they're all out. Correct. First place is the only place that really matters. I see. Oh, by the way, yeah. If Jean Genie wins, Jean Genie is the only one with twenty points in this match. That solidifies a spot at 30 points in the bracket. If Grump wins or Jean Genie loses, uh, then that means that we will for sure have tiebreakers. If Jean Genie takes first, though, then it is still up in the air whether or not we'll have them. Grumpmeister is still in the lead, though, because of that there's still a very real chance we will enter the tiebreakers. Yeah. I love uh, having tiebreaker matches. I mean, it might not be the favorite thing for the uh, for the players because they have to play an extra game just to make it into brackets. But um, yeah, it's fine. It's like it's like a sudden death kind of thing. It's uh, I find it real exciting. Yeah, I find it exciting too. You know because of that, that's all that matters. But I like it. That's why we have this tournament. So I can laugh. Pretty much. And then, you know, like, 200 of your friends join you. Oh, laugh. well, okay. Um, yeah, sorry, my friends. <laughs> I just love uh, digging through, uh, digging through the trash heap to find stuff like this. Yeah, this this game, I feel like this is a game that I, if I had it when I was a kid, I would have played this. I probably would have played it a lot. Like it, it's got my aesthetic. It's mm -hmm. uh, you say that maybe it's not the prettiest game, but I like the the way that it looks. I love like all of the enemies are so unique in the way yeah. that they move. Uh, and their their individual patterns, like they they put this guy, this single developer, put a lot of work into it. Yes, it yeah. might not have audio. Yes, maybe the save menu is very broken, but there's a lot of good in this. Yeah, I mean, this is what I I kind of like to find is not just games that are rare, but ones that had interesting ideas, maybe things we can learn from today. Um, or things that have a forgotten aesthetic to them. Um, this is, you know, the graphical style is pretty similar to a lot of the like Apogee games that came out at the time, but yeah. it certainly has um, has its own take on it with the with the vegetables. Yeah, and. I'm trying to think. Uh, Apogee games definitely did have a specific style. You know, we're thinking Commander Keen and such. Uh, right. And this game does definitely use some of that. But why not, you know? It's like, as soon as Mario came out, everybody was using some style similar to Mario because it was easy to see everything. Because, ah. it, you know, it, it was it made the game playable and having a graphic style that everybody can see where they are and see what the objects are that they need to get. Uh, it, it's good. Uh, and honestly, I would say that, you know, if you're making your first game, uh, yeah, don't just copy paste, but do take inspiration from the games that uh, you liked. 
you know, take inspiration. Feel free to uh, take some of the styles that they have. You know, uh, worst case scenario is that people will say, hey, your game looks a lot like this other game that's good, and it's clear that you got inspiration from it. That's okay. I mean, as with most uh, types of art and media, everybody borrows from somebody else. Yes. Except for the very first video game. But that borrowed from real life. Well, maybe at some point I'll share some more with you about the very first video game. As it turns out, bouncing things back and forth. Oh, before that. What came before bouncing stuff? Well, maybe, maybe at some point on your show, you'll find out. I might have uh, some DMUB submissions coming up. Okay. In that case, if you do submit that, I will go ahead and tell you exactly what that stole from, because it definitely had to steal or borrow from something in real life, and that is fine. I would love to see your DMUB submission, okay? Great. Actually, I gone, really but... love learning about video game history. That's fine. Like, I do not expect the first quote-unquote video game to be, like, an Oscar winner, you know? Not gonna happen. They didn't even have Oscars at that time. Or maybe uh, they did. Yeah, they... Okay. They didn't have video game choice awards, huh? They didn't have the Nickelodeon show either, where, like, the Teen Choice Awards... Uh, yeah, those just didn't exist at that time. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. The Team Choice Awards did not exist. So Final Sentinel has anime. Finally, has anime. Yeah, I think and Final Sentinel is done with that. Done with Cuso Grande. Yeah. Well, that's okay. It's a good way to go out. What with cucumbers and all. Yeah. We've got 30 seconds left. So everybody get ready with your Tims. Get ready. Oh, I feel like I've very much enjoyed this match. And if I'm not mistaken, the victory is still going to be going to Grumpmeister. Here we go. Five seconds left. And it is time! Oh my gosh! Okay, almost time. So that close. That was so close. So close! It takes superhumans to be able to do better than that. Well, we can definitely say that third place is Final Sentinel and fourth place is Zed Hawthorne. I believe Grumpmeister took first and Gene Genie second. We'll see officially what our referee Kata says here. Uh, and it looks like Kate is typing. Zed liked this one. See, it's I a likable game. Uh, yeah, I think so. It, it's got problems, but it's likable. Bad doesn't necessarily mean unfun. Okay, I'm, I'm just holding my breath, everybody, to see what the final ruling is. Kate says 99% sure that Grumpmeister wins. So I'm gonna invite Grumpmeister in. Come and chat if you'd like. Yeah. Gene Genie was definitely super close to uh, taking the victory here as well. And because of that, you know, we will get a review, but Grumpmeister, if Grumpmeister does take the victory, we will be having tiebreakers for sure. Well, let's go ahead and see. <laughs> and Sentinel now blaming RetroArc and not having things bound correctly. Blaming that for the loss. <laughs> Grumpmeister, welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh I... my gosh, <laughs> this was fun. It, it actually was, yeah. It was really interesting to yeah, play around a bit with the puzzle elements, uh, with the weight of the character, all that kind of stuff. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, like, I, I think this game 
uh, especially for its time, being made by one person is pretty dang good. Very impressive for what they did in 94, you know? Oh, uh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it definitely has its problems, but overall, I think that this is a game that I would enjoy playing if it were given to me. Yeah, so uh, we're thinking you made it to level four. You're struggling with yeah. that one a little bit. Uh, I thought I had uh, softlocked myself, actually, because I believe I have all the candies. But um, I used the key in that last little room on yep. the far end of the screen uh, to get out of it again. And I don't think I should have done that. So right now, where I'm currently sitting is with that key that I didn't use. So I should be able to get to the exit. I believe so, yeah. Uh, as far as we could tell, it was a late level trick in order to get you to softlock. That's one thing that I don't particularly love about the game. It's an, it's not a good choice uh, for seeing like, that there are so many softlocks. At the very least, there is a kill button, but if, if you're going to have so many softlocks, make the level shorter. You know, like Baba is you, that's acceptable because uh, the levels are a single screen. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, that was the thing that I wanted to check out uh, right now, basically. Like, whether I just missed the, um, uh, the exit behind a, a, a door that I needed to, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That particular key for. <laughs> but uh, that's where I ended up, yeah. But yeah. It, it, it wasn't the first time that it tried to pull something like that, so... Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I just think, yeah, the, the, the game definitely, I think stage one has a lot of learning to do when you don't have all of the instructions for what things do, what items do what, uh, and you seem to learn the basic mechanics fairly quickly. I really like the, the item uh, and the weight issue. If you have too many items, you know, you can't jump as high. Uh, and that was kind of a fun little puzzle aspect that you were able to figure out as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. How long did it take you to figure out that's what was happening? Um, it didn't take me that long. Like when I uh, was stuck in that initial bit uh, with the key, um, like when you had uh, two keys, and I had one of those, uh, yeah, sauces, I think it was, uh, like salad sauces. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that I needed to throw away, uh, uh, when I just used one key on that sparkly platform thingy, I could not jump high enough to reach the platform, but when I used the other key, I could. So I figured like, okay, there has to be something to do with weight and items that you have in your inventory and jump height. Yeah. So that's where it, uh, it uh, yeah, came from. Okay. It may actually have been uh, Jean Genie who got it. Uh, I just noticed that I indeed missed uh, a donut. Uh, so I wasn't completely at the end yet. You hadn't gotten literally everything. Yeah, we're going to have to... Apparently. This is why Kate is going to go and yeah. review. Oh, jeez. It's so stressful. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like. <laughs> it's so stressful. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean... Uh, Gene Nelson did really well for, for Mother Red, so uh, yeah, if he, uh, he did fantastic. If he, he got further than uh, it's all his. Yeah, we'll we'll see though. This is why we have the review at times, just to make sure that who took the victory did take the victory. Well, thank you so much, Gruntmeister. Is there anything that you need to plug before we let you go? Well, I have been. Uh, yeah, streaming obviously a bit. Uh, I tend to speedrun a lot of uh, obscure and uh, notorious games, let's put it that way. Like, not all games are bad. Uh, I am currently working on Gumball, which is a bit, bit like uh, Zelda meets Earthbound. I, it Interesting. Gave, and you gave, like, uh, that love child of those two, you gave it guns. Aww. So, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's a really fun game, a really interesting one to do. Well, that's so, awesome! Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I've been doing. Cool. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, Jeff. Both of you, have a great rest of your day. Take care, all right? You too. Thanks so much. Bye. And thank you, Jeff. Well, everybody, this is Cuso Grande, the Bad Video Game Tournament. I'm going to run a quick ad, and we will be right back with 
our final game of the day. Don't forget, we have four games tomorrow as well. See you in about a minute or two. Welcome back, everybody, to Costa Grande, the bad video game tournament. We're going to go ahead 